What's up guys, man, it's been too long. It's been almost a week since I've done a video. I feel like I'm going through video withdrawals. I've, I've missed you guys. But uh, anyway, I wanted to go ahead and make a little quick update video on what's gone on in the last week because it's been a kind of crazy week. And unfortunately, there's been zero flying, zero, none at all. Uh, it's been too smoky and too hot to do that. And honestly, after how much flying we did for the Oshkosh trip and then getting back, I'd miss my wife. It was time for a little bit of husband-wife time and I obviously had my household duties to take care of here. So no flying, but there was a bunch of other stuff that happened, so I wanted to fill you guys in on all that. I'm Trent Palmer. I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. So yeah, this has been a crazy week. A few of the big things that happened were, well, first of all, I uh, had my birthday. I turned 30. I am now officially old. I'm no longer a 20 year old or 20 something year old. I'm now in my 30s. Haley threw me a big barbecue. So we ended up grilling up a bunch of ribs, having friends over, which was super nice. Now, speaking of Haley, I know a lot of you guys were asking, where's Haley at Oshkosh? I thought she was coming. And to answer this and make a, a long story short, Yes, she was on her way to Oshkosh. There ended up being gnarly thunderstorms in Denver. Her flight into Denver, which was her connecting uh, layover, got delayed so much so that they had to go fuel up somewhere else. When she finally made it to Denver, her next flight was canceled. All flights out of there were canceled. It was a mess. So her two options were sleep on the floor in Denver and then try to catch a flight that was the following afternoon, or they could send her back to Reno. Even if she had stayed on the floor in Denver, it was like she still wasn't getting to Oshkosh for another almost 24 hours and it was just so much and she really didn't have that much time to hang out at Oshkosh. So they had a nice open flight in first class to get her back home. So we just decided, you know, let's cut our losses. Unfortunately, it was just too much. You know, she doesn't travel all that much and that was her first time traveling alone and she basically got hit with all the worst things that could happen as far as being stuck in a customer service line for like four hours in Denver and all the stresses that came with that. So I didn't want her to push it and we decided, you know what, next year. The other thing that happened this week, it's been kind of our week of birds. Haley recently got a couple of these uh, little finches. They're like zebra finches. I don't know why she wants birds. It's, you know, it's her thing. Yeah, happy wife, right? <laughs> but before my uh, little birthday barbecue, she was outside spraying down the bottom of the bird cage just to get the bird poop off so everything was clean when we had guests over and she went to reach in to remove the, the water bowl inside the bird cage and one of her finches got out and mind you, this is outside, gone. Bird's gone. What's happening, babe? Honey. <laughs> one of her birds got out. She was cleaning the cage. Hey, flew out. <laughs> she was cleaning the bird cage outside. I should let the other one out. Oh my God, she's gone. Go on, go on, go on. You're out here cleaning the birdcage, huh? No, she, I mean, she's gone. <laughs> like, I don't know what, to, I was doing this. So, she panicked. She, she was very unhappy about that. So, uh, you know, and then we ended up with one bird, one lonely bird. So, took her down to PetSmart. We got her another bird. What's that, Haley? It's a replacement bird. <laughs> but it looks like the other bird. So, hopefully, there's no... No now, two days later, we were both at home. Haley went to check on the birds before we went to bed. And I, I, I'm telling you, I could not make this up. This was the gnarliest thing I've seen. She went up to the bird cage and there is a big gopher snake inside of the bird cage in the house, choking out the new bird or had choked out the new bird. Essentially, somehow this four, four and a half foot long gopher snake must have come in when the sliding glass door was open, made its way up the stand into the bird cage, got one of the birds and unfortunately killed it. Haley's actually freaking because this is gnarly. There is a huge snake that got one of the birds. I don't know where it came from. What the heck? Okay, we got to get it out of there. Neither Haley and I are big fans of snakes. I uh, have learned that I have to deal with them because it seems like here in the desert where we live, we kind of run into them at least once every spring or fall. So you factor out over six years, we've seen six, seven, eight of them, but never had one that came this far into our house and then let alone got towards one of our pets. So 
We kind of went through a little panic scramble for a second. I didn't film anything of any of this, so what I'm showing you clip-wise is just from my Instagram stories, the, the little updates. Obviously, my phone being in my pocket's a lot easier than grabbing this camera and running over and shooting it, especially when the wife is panicking and crying because one of her birds just got suffocated by a snake that came into its cage. So anyway, I grabbed the cage, we went outside, we weren't sure what to do. The snake, when I moved the cage, released the bird. Uh, at this point, the bird was already uh, dead, but um, then the other bird was panicking, flying around, and the snake started going for the second bird, and I'm like, oh God, don't let it kill two birds. So I was so close to just opening the cage door and letting the other bird out, because at least then it has a chance, but I ended up grabbing a glove, getting my hand in the uh, cage on the snake, you know, right behind its head, so I could hold it from biting. <laughs> And of course that thing latched down like you wouldn't believe and I was able to get it out of the cage, threw it over the fence, all was good. That was the end of the snake ordeal, or so we thought. The following day I was walking outside out our back sliding glass door, I looked down, that snake, or at least I think it was that snake, was right there next to the door trying to find an opening to get back in to eat our birds again. So again, I don't like snakes, Ugh, they just weird me out, but I had to grab the thing and took it and removed it beyond the fence. And then today we went to the uh, Home Depot and got this snake deterrent spray and we sprayed all over our yard in hopes that we don't have any more snakes. So what else is new? Oh, Scott Palmer and Ty Furkin both came into town just to hang out for a few days. Didn't do any flying, but it was good seeing those guys. You can call me stupid. Dude. What's up? Long time no see. I know. Yeah. How was the flight? Bumpy. Bumpy headwinds. Not like we had it all on the way to Oshkosh, Oshkosh those but. Skies for us. You guys were the ones that chose to fly at night or afternoon, yeah, whatever night. it is. Yeah, it was like I don't IFR. Know what it is. We're in the smoke, but you know, at 10,000 feet at 200 knots, it's pretty good after. <laughs> He's making it sound better than it was. We're yeah. doing like 180 miles an hour at best. <laughs> Man, you always got to over exaggerate when you're on TV. <laughs> Mind having this airplane. He'll sell it. It looks way better yeah, I than I thought it did. It just it looks, looks like it's been parked outside. outside. Yeah, because it has. Does he clock it? Is this like Compton? Yeah. It is Reno. All right, I think we're going to head over, get these guys some food, and maybe go take a look at Nick's Kit Fox, because from what I hear, that thing's like pretty close to ready to fly. When it comes to her, you better keep it sealed. Don't you dare say a single word, or I will strike you where it Obviously, we haven't been here for a while. This looks a lot more like an airplane than it did when I was last year. It's a little bit. Yeah. So tell me how long it's been and what you've got done it's and what's It's been left. exactly five months now, and uh, I just have a laundry list of like one page left to do, and it's ready to rock. Everything's done. Uh, engine's been fired off a couple times. Just finishing the interior and finish my flight controls and put some vinyl on it so it doesn't look like a weird plane. That's about it. There it is. There's the panel. It's now an actual touchable G3X. And you don't have anything else? Nope, no breakers, no nothing. It's all vertical power and... How does that work? Uh, it's a solid state breaker system. It basically houses all your uh, power distribution in one little box. And it shows up on the screen once this boots up, I'll show you. So Nick has this G3X in here, which is like the top of the line avionics, in my opinion, that's available for experimental. I mean, they just made it for certified as well, but he's got like the cleanest install you could do because he did this vertical power system. So there's no breakers. What it is, is it runs through a solid state, basically box that allows them to trip all the breakers or reset them or check them yeah, all through the panel. Yeah, it allows to see exactly what's going on. So if you look here on the screen, it shows me how many amps the system's pulling, battery voltage, and I can go through and see each individual circuit, what it's doing, what it's drawing. So landing lights, say I have a landing light failure, it'll come up and tell me that one of my landing lights is out. So it's and pretty nice. And what else can the G3X do? Uh, it does all your maps, all your, uh, I put in the ADSB in and out transponders. So I have 
all my traffic right here, ADSB out obviously, so I'm 2020 complied. Everything the iPad does on ForeFlight, or, or any of those, radio, transponder, and engine monitoring. So there's your engine monitoring stuff right there. So, so it's everything. More. Yeah, everything. Everything you think of that an airplane needs, it does it right on one screen. All right, dude, so what is left and when's first flight? Um, a little bit more interior, uh, seat pan's finished right there, and uh, hopefully in the next week or two is what I'm looking for. What do you think, Scott? I think it looks pretty dang good. Makes me jealous a little bit. Makes me want to go build another one. Yeah. Well, build one, I didn't build mine. I just bought mine, like the, the lazy way into it. <laughs> but I think I need gear like this. Look yes, these things. you do. These things are so sexy. Especially yeah. naked. What do you think about the whole plane? It's bitching. I love how tall it is. This. <laughs> my head. That's some prop clearance, huh? Yeah. The Luga right. one's a Later, man. So yeah, I'll plan on trying to be there for his first flight as long as my uh, uh, schedule allows. I'll definitely want to be able to document that. That's super exciting. I can only imagine how cool it is to fly an airplane that you built yourself. I'm, I'm a little envious of that. Oh, and another big thing happened this week. We hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is actually kind of mind-blowing to me. I can't even, my mind just doesn't even compute that. So it's kind of weird when I think about it because the town I grew up in as a kid had like 14,000 people in it. That was the entire town. And now I'm like, whoa, that's a lot more people watching these videos. So I wanted to really quickly say thank you guys. Thank you to everyone that has been tuning in and watching these, the people that have been hitting the like button and the subscribe button or sharing my video with your friends, thank you. It makes all of this energy and effort that I put into these videos so much more worth it when I'm seeing you guys are enjoying it. So thank you again for watching and, and, and enjoying them and I hope you continue to enjoy them. It makes it all worth it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this up here. I'm sorry there was no flying in this. I'm sorry it was just an update, but I hopefully made it entertaining enough with kind of the crazy week we had, especially the snakes and the birds and just, uh, yeah. Anyway, tomorrow I am getting up bright and early. We are heading over to Salt Lake City to hang out with the Flying Cowboys to go check out Draco and actually see it in its actual environment, get that thing doing some off-field stuff because really, when Mike finished the, the Wilga, he took it and flew directly to Oshkosh. His first real practice landings were on the way to Oshkosh, so all his short field stuff has been on runways or grass runways right next to the runway or you know that kind of area. He has not done, at least with me, any off-field operations. So I'm really excited to get out there, see that thing in its native environment. Scott's gonna be out there doing a stunt with the Wilga. I don't know if I can tell you anything about it yet, but there's some cool stuff going on. So make sure you guys tune in for the next video. And yeah, I think I'm gonna sign off here. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, you know the drill. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you guys on the next one. Peace.